On today's show, we're in the final days of a week-long trip in the Sierra Madre Mountains. This is Cheese's first time where he's ever gonna be able to hunt. On our first morning out, Cheese managed to take his buck before we even left base camp. Never thought I would be, I would get my first deer in Mexico. <laughs> Over the next few days, we found several good bucks. And after multiple failed attempts, Aiming for the top of his back, I don't know, I shot over him. Trav finally sealed the deal on his first ever desert whitetail. If it wasn't for working for my alpine carnivore, I don't think I would ever have this opportunity to come hunt these deer and see the country that I had just seen. Now that the boys have filled their tags, this leaves me with just a day and a half to locate and take an old warrior off the mountain. The pressure is on and the clock is ticking. Mexico is well known for a lot of things. It's got nice beaches, good tequila, and great tacos to name a few. But for me, one thing that did not come to mind when I thought of Mexico was the low hunting pressure and the abundance of wildlife. Northern Mexico is a hunter's paradise. If you're in a hunting white-tailed deer, mule deer, desert bighorns, or even javelina, and you're thinking about doing a trip abroad, it's definitely a place that you should check out. Now that we have Trav's deer all quartered up and packed out, the challenge for us is we don't have much time left to hunt. And so we're taking a risk and heading into an unfamiliar basin in hopes of finding some new bucks that we've yet to lay eyes on. Earlier this year, I got a really good tip by a seasoned coos deer hunter who's telling me every time you're glassing after midday, you know, after that 11 o'clock mark, you should always try and glass into the sun. And what we found now is he said that because the deer are going to be better on the shade side of the mountain or the hill or whatever the case. So if you're glassing into the sun, that means the shade is hitting the face that you're looking at. And what we found is if you find a spot where you're glassing into the sun and the shade is slowly coming off, what happens is after give it 20 minutes or so, those deer are going to get hit by the sun. And then that forces them to stand up and move and find more shade. So we're finding a lot of deer and they're just kind of, they're bedded and then they're in the dark and then the sun hits them and then they stand up and then they move. So it's been working really well for us. But it does kind of suck because we're just getting baked by the sun all day. But hey, what do you do? I just spotted a pretty nice buck. 230 yards. Looks like he's a three by three. He might have a brow dine on his left side. He's got some okay man. Oh, he just, oh no. That was a pretty good buck. He spotted you and took off. Just now? Just now. <laughs> it's a good buck, too. How big? 230 yards. Three by three for sure. Good mass. You'll see him on the camera. He was at his ears. Good mass. Oh, yeah? Three by three, and he had brow tine on one side. Nice. Really don't have anything to really compare to as far as size, size is concerned. Um, but this is, this is a nice buck for sure. 
He's puny. That's oh, make, make us feel better. <laughs> There's a really good bedding area over there with the sun going down to the water of the south. That's all going to be shaded in right yeah, there. So. It's like impossible to see in that shit yeah, too. So <laughs> been looking. Right now it's still a little shaded in too, so it's, it's hard to penetrate the canopy. Yeah. All right. Oh, is it? Oh wow, he's actually a pretty decent buck. He's got some mass on him. He's got double brows. He's gonna range him. What do you think he's at? Right now? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm guess gonna say 330. 350, 380. 331. 331, eh? Okay. Like he's got a pretty tall beam on the right. His G2 is strong. Yeah, his his right side is really nice. Yeah, right there you can see. A... Yeah, I see the busted. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. One broke. Oh yeah, that's he's, funny. He's bare beam basically on. The, yeah, he's on just got. So he's got. He's got his eye guard, and then he's got one busted tine. It's just like a side, side hoop. That's funny. Oh no, he's moving. Yeah, just get settled in. I'll, I'll keep my eye on him. Oh, there's another deer. Or is that him running? Oh, he's running away. That's all right. It ain't done. Sure, I'll come back. That doe is up here, so. So we're missing a couple other animals. We saw uh, about 20 javelinas there kicking around down there. But a couple more things we're missing. We're missing kudamundis. Yeah, kudamundi. That's what it's called. I was trying to think of that <laughs> earlier. And we're also missing cougars. Well, I'd love to see a cougar, to be honest with I've, you. I don't believe I've ever seen a mountain lion in the wild. Last year we were here, Tom seen one. Couldn't get it on camera. So it'd be real cool to spot one of them suckers. Are they, are they big? Same color as deer, well, maybe a little bit more beige. Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. they'd be kind of red. Reddish. Full of hog blood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Last year, we heard pigs in the night screaming. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, that cougar is eating good. He's eating good. Well, Speaking of eating good, let's go get some beef stroke in the old boys. That's right. Last morning, last day, the final 12. A little French vanilla, but you know, for us, it's just vanilla. <laughs> Mexican, Mexican vanilla. You didn't get it, Jesus. You're not French. You're not part of the joke. For us, we're, 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 we're here. We're in Mexico. But he's a little ways out there and he's not, he's not nearly the class of the buck that we spotted in here earlier, so hopefully I don't kick myself in the ass. He's at just over 300 right now, but 
I really want to get my hands on that. That buck was just, uh, he's a whole nother class. And he's somewhere right here in front of us. You just gotta find him. And the sun is just terribly placed right now. It's right in our eyes, so it's making it real tough to spot him in here. But we're gonna, I'm just gonna hunt this all day because I, that is the buck. That is the buck that we're after. So he's here. We just gotta put in the time, we'll pick him up. more bucks one one's like just a little guy the other one's pretty decent buck they're just over 400 yards they're just kind of hanging out together there looks like they're in square off for a minute but i'm just jaded now it's now it's that one buck or no buck i just might go home empty-handed if we don't see him i don't know We know he's in here. We just got to put in the time. We're seeing deer though, so that's good. It's not a giant, but still a pretty decent buck. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Oh yeah, he's rotten for sure. Tearing that shrub up. And eye guards and all. Okay. So, I don't know if this is our target buck or not, but he's, he's a real nice, mature buck. I'm gonna take this deer. He's at right around 200. Missed him. No. Yeah. Where is he? Same spot. He moved five feet forward. Can't see him. He's, he's just moving down to the same spot. Okay, Mitch, he's right. Same spot, just beside the tree to the to the right. Get okay, him. He's done. I hurt my ears. Sorry. <laughs> I thought it was gonna fall off this cliff here. Holy smokes. I don't know how big that deer is. Chaff's been the one behind the, who actually spotted him, but he looks like a stud. He's got some mass, he's got some height. I'm pretty sure that's the same buck that we spotted from earlier. He's down right there, right there. Yeah, I, I don't know how I missed that first shot. I was like over the edge, like pulling into myself. I was like, please don't fall off the edge. Fortunately, didn't go anywhere. He's tall, <laughs> he's wide, he's heavy. He's just a, I think he's the biggest buck 
we've seen. <laughs> like he, he's good. He's a he's yeah. Know, he's a nice buck. He's like close to the ears at least, right? Oh, I think he might be past. Like from what I remember earlier, yeah. we had him right there. Now, as far as backcountry recoveries are concerned, this one was nothing out of the ordinary. We had to make our way through a pretty large boulder garden and then drop down into a small saddle. And at the end of the saddle, we had to scale down a 25 foot cliff. I said she's a little sharp. <laughs> oh, well. it's, uh, it's doable. It's not pretty. <clears throat> As I got down to the bottom of the cliff, I turned around to see Cheese slip off of the top and cartwheel down, hitting the rocks as he went down with his face and landing square on his ribs on a boulder at the bottom. What happened, Cheese? Boulder right there. He fell off again. Fell off bud. 20 foot cliff. You look pretty beaned up, man. Yeah, I need, a, I need some ice over here for sure. What day of the hunt are we on, Cheese? Uh, just breathe. Ooh, ooh, damn. What do you think happened? I think I was trying to take care too much of the camera and I couldn't hug, hug the wall. And I think I stepped with my right and then slip right there I tumbled though yeah you you roll good man you're up there where Trav is just like boom boom you hit this rock the type of stuff you risk guys you're climbing down cliffs shit can happen at any time that was uh I was standing there at the bottom. Nothing I could do. He just zipped right by me like a stone. Landed hard on uh, some rocks here at the bottom. He did the whole two somersaults down there, Cheese. As you can imagine with a fall of this magnitude, Cheese was pretty banged up. He had a big old goose egg on his head and he had bruised ribs. Fortunately for him though, he was able to walk out of there without any broken bones. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a big old goose egg. It's already swelling. It's in situations like these that we need to stop and take a minute and reflect. I think I, I like the wall, man, I was trying to hug it, but I didn't want to bang the camera the lens. And learn from this type of experience as this could have been a very different outcome. There he is, we got him. Well, finally put him down. Last day buck, we made it happen in Sonora and uh, I couldn't be happier. I mean, this guy's an absolute stud. He's got some mass, he's got some character. He's all busted up. I like that right there. Yeah, nice little kicker, little blade on him. It's a great way to end this little uh, Mexican slam here. Put the triple down in Sonora and I could just not be happier. Cheese, Trav, good job boys. Thank you, Mr. Buck. Thank you. As the morning gave way to midday and the sun rose to its highest point in the sky, Trav and I made quick work of this deer. We packed it into game bags and let it hang in the shade for about an hour to cool down. <clears throat> All right. It's actually, yeah, it sucks, but it's not that bad. Definitely had heavier packs. Heavy packs suck no matter what. <laughs> Cheers, gentlemen. See you guys on the other side. It was only a short five kilometer hike back to the ranch. And as the rocky ridges gave way to a sandy river bottom and the road came into view, my mind was already dreaming up ways to prepare a feast for all our new friends 
back at the lodge. Now there's many ways to cook tenderloins, but when you got a bunch of mouths to feed, there's one surefire way to make sure that everybody leaves there happy. You douse the meat in barbecue sauce, wrap it in bacon, and fire it on the grill. For the rest of the evening, we swapped stories with our new friends and we're all already looking forward to coming back and doing it all over again. All right, everybody, thanks a lot for watching this week's show. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the series that we put together. This coup series down in Mexico has just been phenomenal for us. I mean, Cheese got his first buck ever, Trav got his first Coos buck, and I downed myself just an absolute stud today. So we couldn't be happier on our end, and I really hope that that came through and you guys enjoyed watching this whole series. So if you did, please show us a bit of love, subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave us a comment down below and let us know what you think of the video. All right, so that's it for this week. We'll see you guys on next week's show. Next time on Alpine Carnivore. So, looks like we found a pretty decent bear. That's, that's a big pile. Yeah, that's a, that's a cinnamon bear. I just spotted a very, very nice bear. I think he's in jet black. It's a nice looking bear. That's a cool hide on it. Just got the little wrench. Just...